Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Target Focus Life. My name's Steve, and today I have the Franke Affinity 3 Elite Waterfall 12 gauge shotgun. So if you're looking for an in-depth and detailed review, you've come to the right place. Let's go! So in the intro, I called it the Franke Affinity 3 Elite Waterfall. It's actually the Franke Affinity 3 Waterfall Elite. But hey, who is keeping track anyways? Now in this review, I'm gonna go through a lot of different areas. So if you wanna jump to a specific item like reliability and recoil or specs, you can check that in the description down below. Jump right to the spot. The Affinity 3 Elite Waterfall was made to be, just like the name implies, a waterfowl shotgun. This Elite Waterfall Edition has an MSRP of $1,249. The MSRP of the plain camel version of the Affinity 3 is a little bit less at $959. It doesn't have some of the features and finishes that this does. We'll jump into that in just a little bit. But they also have a black synthetic version that comes in at an MSRP of $849. Now, as always, I shop at Reed's, so I check prices at Reed's. They are significantly less than MSRP. Instead of the 1249 MSRP, I was able to find this specific shotgun, picked it up at Reed's for 1099. Let's take a jump into the specs, look at the specs of this shotgun, see what we're working with. Right off the bat, this is inertia operated shotgun, which as you probably know, makes it a little simpler, less moving parts, and sometimes even a little bit lighter. Now this gun is fairly light, around six pounds, 14 ounces. Any 12 gauge semi-auto that's under seven pounds is a Pretty light shotgun, so I like light as long as it doesn't mean heavy recoil, and we'll be testing that in just a little bit here. The length of pull of this shotgun, so from the trigger to the butt end of the stock, is 14 and 3 8 inches. So a little bit longer than some of your standard 12 gauge shotguns. You find a lot of them around that 14 and a quarter, and that's maybe a hair short for me, so that added eighth inch might fit me a little bit better. Um, maybe one of the downsides though of the length of pull is it's not adjustable. And as you can see, it has a kind of a proprietary butt end plate here, which means it's gonna be a little bit harder to throw in, maybe gonna be impossible to throw on aftermarket butt plates or recoil pads, such as the Falcon Strike that I like to put on guns to help reduce recoil. Now this shotgun does come with some shims included. These shims here, you're able to use these to adjust right here and that moves the drop at comb drop at heel so you have some adjustment there you can also adjust the cast cast is whether the stock goes left or right or to what extent the drop at the comb is two and a half inches and there's a one inch drop to three and a half inches at the heel the affinity 3 elite waterfall does also come with three extended waterfall chokes for close mid and long range shots i got the mid range on right here Usually I like to swap my chokes out for my Carlson's chokes, but I haven't got one for the Affinity 3 yet. It's on order, should be here anytime. By the way, if you ever wanna check out Carlson's chokes, the chokes that I use, you can check the link down below. Some of you may be wondering if it comes with this nice paracord sling. Yes, it does, the Elite Waterfall Edition does. The other regular camo versions, black synthetic, don't come with that. This is a 28 inch barrel, which is my preference. They don't have a lot of barrel options on the different Affinity 3 models. Most are 28, I believe there's a few 26. This gun has a really nice fiber optic sight on it. It's two-tone, so you can kind of tell if you're looking straight down the barrel or not. Again, if you watch my reviews, you know I'm not a huge fan of fiber optics. Once you are on the gun, you wanna ignore it, be looking at your target. I'll be testing that out a little bit to see if this is too distracting. I don't like big fibers, I like little ones. Great for aligning your head, but once you call pull, you should be mounting up, have that muscle memory, and ignore that fiber. Now the Affinity 3 Elite Waterfall does have a raised vented rib. I much prefer ribs that are raised up above the height of the receiver. I just find that when I mount into the shotgun, if I have to look straight with the receiver, often my head just raises a little bit and I find myself peeking. Yes, even I peek at targets periodically, especially when I'm shooting new guns. So I like a raised rib, they just seem to be more natural. I kind of have a long neck, so when I mount guns, my head's maybe a little bit higher. So the raised rib is definitely beneficial to me. This receiver is drilled and tapped, so if you ever wanted to take it out turkey hunting as well in the spring, you could definitely add a pick rail and an optic on there. I love 
Vortex red dots when I'm out turkey hunting. So you've got some great versatility with this shotgun as well. It's a waterfall shotgun, could use it turkey hunting. Shooting clays, that's yet to be determined. We'll test that out here in just a minute, how well it's gonna do on the range, cycling light target loads. Now let's take a look at the trigger of this shotgun. There's a couple things I like to look at when I'm looking at the trigger. First off is just the feel. How does the trigger feel? There's a decent amount of pre-travel, that is the amount of movement from when you pull the trigger to when the trigger actually breaks and releases the firing pin. It feels kind of a stretch actually to get my, from where my hand sits naturally on this gun to getting it up in the trigger. I feel like I'm kind of having to stretch. I can't get my finger around quite as much. Doesn't feel bad. Feels like a, a fairly crisp trigger, but with a little bit of pre-travel, a little bit more than I would generally like. I like triggers between five and six pounds. Definitely don't like them much over six. A little under five is definitely great. Let's see what this comes in at. Five pounds, 5.6 ounces. We'll do three pulls, get an average. There was some variation there. Four pounds, 14 ounces. Now let's see what this last one comes in at. Five pounds, three ounces. So variation in trigger pull. I don't know if that comes in at the scale or if there's some variation or where you pull it, but that's why we do an average coming up with five pounds, 2.5 ounces. So fairly light trigger. I'm happy with that. Next, we're gonna take a look at the ergonomics of this shotgun. This is a huge factor for me. Ergonomics are all about the feel, the form, the function, the controls. And you just want a shotgun to feel good in your hands, right? You wanna be able to grab it and just go, that, that fits nice. This has a nice thin pistol grip here, which I much prefer to get those bigger, bulkier ones. I just feel like I don't have as much control. I like to get my hand around it. And I got pretty big hands. Well, okay, they're average. I have pretty average hands. <laughs> so it feels good for me there. The forearm or forend here, that feels pretty good too. It has a nice, it's nice and recessed up at the top, allowing me to get my fingers up in that groove. Has good texture here on the forend, good texture here on the grip. I would say it feels relatively comfortable. As far as balance, you know, it's, it's a pretty well-balanced gun. Let's see where the balance point is. It's maybe a little more farther forward than I would have imagined. Balance point is about right there. It's a lot of times you find on inertia guns, they're a little lighter on the forend because they don't have the gas components like the piston and the spring and the sleeve and all the things that can go on the forend that you have in a gas gun. So I'm surprised that it is a little heavier up front. I don't necessarily mind that though because sometimes on inertia guns, they can be so light up front that your barrel's so light and you're just whipping it around too fast. There's good applications for that. Shooting clays, not necessarily a great application. Waterfowl, not always great, but that could be a little bit of a personal preference as well. So I'm not gonna get hung up on that. But as far as the feel, mounting it up, it feels pretty darn good. I like the way this gun feels. Franke did a nice job with that. Looking at the controls, we do have an oversized bolt release and we have an oversized charging handle. Now that comes on the Elite Waterfall. If you look at some of the other versions, they do have a Cerakote version that looks very similar to this with like the burnt bronze Cerakote barrel and receiver. It's got camo, but it doesn't have some of the accessories. It doesn't have the sling, doesn't have the oversized bolt release and charging handle. It also does not come with the extended choke. So those are some of the quick differences between the Elite Waterfall and some of their other Waterfall shotguns. Taking a look at the safety, it's a cross bolt safety on the back side of the trigger guard, which is where I prefer it. It's just easier for me to get my fingers up, hit that quick and get on the trigger. I don't like to reach forward and come back. If you watch my reviews, you know that personal preference thing, not a big deal. The safety is a little bit on the small side, nothing fancy here. I'm looking at it, it's just a, it's a safety, nothing special. A little smaller than I'd like, I would say. Lastly, with the ergonomics, I'm looking at the butt end of the shotgun, the recoil pad they have on there. Um, it's nice, it's, it's firm, but yet it compresses. I'm interested to see what recoil's like on this. Inertia shotguns generally have a little bit more recoil, but the few shots I have into this, I have really enjoyed it. We'll get more into that in just a minute. A few other things with ergonomics, I'm looking at the trigger guard. It's ample, it's not oversized, not huge. Uh, 
but it's ample. It's sufficient, let's call it. Looking at the loading port, it is beveled out here. I love to see that. I love beveled out loading ports. Easier to load, get shells in, your hands don't get cut up on sharper edges here. So Franke did a really nice job with that. Real quickly, there are several other variations of the Affinity 3. They do make it in a three and a half inch. I kind of like this gun, or I thought I might like this gun, so I didn't want the three and a half because I might hang on to this one. And as y'all know, three and a half isn't my jam. If you want to shoot three and a half, more power to you. For me, they're more expensive guns, they're more expensive ammo, and I don't know that you get that much better performance. But maybe that's a video idea. Should I take a three and a half and a three inch model of the same gun? and see what different performance we get downrange? Is there really a big difference? I would love to hear in the comments down below what you think, three inch versus three and a half. So on top of having a three inch and three and a half inch, they have waterfall models, elite waterfall models, upland models, black synthetic, turkey models, sporty models, and they have a model called the Catalyst. Catalyst is made specifically for women. So it's not just their compact model. Oh yeah, they have a compact model as well. They took women specifically into account when they made the Catalyst. And so I think hats off to Franke for specifically considering women when making this Franke Affinity 3 Catalyst. Now we're gonna take a look at the build quality of the Affinity 3 Elite Waterfall. Just taking a quick look at this shotgun, I think they did a great job. It all comes together really nice. It feels solid, no wiggle in the forearm. It has a chrome lined barrel, which is pretty common with shotguns at this price point. The finish is really nice. The Cerakote barrel and receiver. Cerakote is very durable, so I love to see that on waterfall shotguns. Now, Franke does state that they have a proprietary extended forcing cone that can help with less felt recoil. It can help with better shot patterns. We're not gonna test that today. That would be a great video idea to get a bunch of guns out, see how they pattern differently, but there are so many combinations of ammo, gun barrels, choke tubes that can lead to different results. So that would be kind of a complicated video, but if you'd like to see me make any videos on choke tubes, patterning, how to, put it in the comments down below. I love to read your guys' comments. So a few other things when looking at build quality, of course, this is always relative to price point. And when we're talking about a thousand to $1,200 shotgun here, I'm very impressed. Um, I don't see anything that I dislike as far as build quality. The trigger guard does look a little plasticky and cheap, but that doesn't mean it is. Uh, plenty of shotguns have uh, a polymer or plastic trigger guard and they hold up just fine. It lightens the weight. There's no reason to be turned off by that. The safety to me is probably the cheapest looking thing on this shotgun. I think they did a great job with ergonomics, build quality. The safety just looks a little rinky dink to be honest. One really cool thing when looking at build quality, this I can't inspect with my eyes, but Franke does offer a seven year warranty on this shotgun. Again, say any mechanical defects or manufacturer defects. So I think that's pretty cool that they're willing to stand behind the product, put seven years behind it. That is saying something. Okay, now getting into one of my favorite parts, it's recoil and reliability. Let's start shooting this bad boy. I'm gonna start off with just some target loads. These are Federal Top Gun, ounce and an eight, eight shot. And I'm always curious to see how these waterfall guns cycle the lighter target loads, especially inertia guns. No issues there. Upside down over the head. Not an issue. Sometimes guns can have issues when you pick up the speed. Let's just try to shoot a little bit faster. No issues there. So as far as reliability with target loads, I think this gun is gonna be just great. Let's look at reliability with some hunting loads. Got the Federal Black Cloud here. This is a three inch shell. Had to double check, make sure I didn't have any three and a halves in there. And this is three shot. Definitely felt an increase of recoil, which you expect going from target loads to waterfall loads. But no issues cycling those. Just for one, just for fun. Let's try one over the head. No issues there at all. So as far as reliability, I think this is gonna be a very reliable shotgun. I've been impressed on what I've seen so far as far as reliability. When it comes to recoil, I'm gonna go back to the target loads. I would say it definitely has some more recoil 
than some of the gas guns out there. Absolutely, but I would say it's pretty moderate. It's not a significant difference, not a ton more recoil. When it comes to waterfall loads, it's got some punch. It's got some punch for sure. A very comfortable gun to shoot, um, not get kicked in the face a lot. So reliability, awesome as far as recoil. Not as great as some gas guns, but if you're looking for inertia, this is right in line. It's a very comfortable inertia gun. Absolutely. Speaking of inertia guns, let's break it down. See how simple or complicated this gun is, how easy it breaks down, how quick it goes back together. Let's go. See how this Affinity 3 breaks down. Four end cap. Off. The barrel and forearm can come off together. Let's pop off. There we go. The bolt and this arm, metal arm, come off together, but then they can be separated. Just gotta make sure when we put it back together, they go back together, they're married, they go together. Pop that pin out, pull the trigger group. Man, that is all there is to it. Very simple, just a few moving pieces here. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's put it back together real quick. Put these back on together. This is about the only challenging part and it's really not that challenging unless the spring, there we go, gets a little stuck sometimes. Now we can slide that on nice and easy. Put the bolt handle back in, just pops in. Take these together, the barrel and forearm. Foreign cap back on. Ready to get back at it and go shooting. So one of the things to love about inertia guns right there, very simple to take apart, very simple to maintain. They run a little bit cleaner, so definitely cool. We have come to my favorite segment. It is speed shooting. I love to take semi-autos and see how fast I can run them. For this test, I take three clays on the clock. When the timer goes off, throw the three clays and see how fast I can shoot them with individual shots. This tells a lot. You might be thinking, well, speed shooting, what is that gonna tell you? It tells me how fast I can get on repeated targets. So that talks about recoil, that talks about trigger pull, that talks about balance, it talks about ergonomics. It's all coming together to make it happen on the clock. Let's see how fast I can go. Not a bad first run. One for one, that's not lightning fast, but I know I can get faster. My first shot was a 0.96. I had a 0.23 split and then a 0.22 split. So I need to clean up those splits a little bit, shoot a little faster. There we go, that was better. Looking at a 1.33, got on at 0.91, so I got on it faster, had a 0.22 split and a 0.20 split. So slightly improved my splits. I made up the most time on actually throwing a little bit faster, getting on it faster. You know, the struggles that I'm having, and I don't show you every clip, right? I'm showing you the good ones. I'm struggling out here. I do with every shotgun as I get used to it. Faster indeed. That was a 127. Took me 0.92 seconds to get on the first one. My split was a 0.18 and a 0.17. 127's moderately fast. I mean, I've definitely shot shotguns faster in the low 1.2s. Definitely gave this several trial runs. Where I had the most struggle, other than mismounting from time to time, because I'm rushing as fast as I can, was on the trigger. It just, it didn't feel like I could get on that trigger really quick and follow up with very fast follow-up shots. Something about the trigger didn't feel right to me. But overall, looking at the Franke Affinity 3 and specifically the Elite Waterfall or Waterfall Elite, I'm back to calling it the wrong name, it's a great shotgun for the money. I would be happy to take this out and shoot with it. Like I mentioned, my son loves the compact version. I think at the price point, if you're looking for an inertia gun, this is definitely a great option. If you want something a little bit better than the Stoger line or something not quite as expensive as the Benelli line, Franke falls kind of right in the middle. So great semi-auto shotgun at the price point. I hope this review was beneficial for you. If you have any comments, put them down below. As always, if you want to learn more about the products I used from the ammo to the choke tubes to the ears and anything in between, check the description down below. If you want to learn more about the guns or where I get my guns from, I can't put that in the link in the description, but I'll put a link to my blog 
that has all those details. So make sure you check that out. Now remember, whether you're in the field or in life, it's only the shots that you're laser focused on that you're gonna hit. So live target focused. See ya.